Beep, 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 beep. How are we doing, people? Welcome to the Court of the EDI Jester. Here, sat on my own at five in the morning. It's like a nut job. How are you? <clears throat> it's a strange time, isn't it, this time? Stuck between me, you know. Perineum. Of Christmas and New Year's. Never know what to do with myself. <clears throat> Sit around and read books, you know. <clears throat> Watch films. Yes. I gave Indiana Jones the Dial of Destiny another go. Oh dear. <laughs> Don't bother. Right, no, actually it was quite fun, really. There's a bit of fun going on there. But I also watched something I haven't watched for a very long time, so I mentioned that as well, called Shortcuts, which is by Robert Altman from way back. But um goes on goes on for a very long time. It's a portmanteau of you know eight or eight or nine intertwining stories. One I love that stuff, don't you? There was another one years ago called Magnolia. Anyway, <clears throat> enough of that nonsense. I had a phone call last night. It made me glasses are steaming up. It's early in the morning, it's cold, and I've got the heating on. For, by heating, I mean a large hairdryer stood on a stool. <laughs> right, okay, so that's better. I can see you. <clears throat> from somebody I haven't heard from for a very long time. It's so odd. because it, it, it was so odd because I was actually watching the Andrew Doyle GB News special with the trigonometry boys, right? So there's the two trigonometry boys, Andrew Doyle, another guy, uh, in which, and I just got to the point where the other guy that was there, I can't remember his name, get, was peeking in real time. You could watch him do it. Go, hang on, sorry, what? They did, and they, oh, and what? Really? Oh my God. And you could, and he said, he actually said, my mind is blown. He said, my mind is blown. Because remember, I always say they're rewriting their entire map of meaning at that point because everything they believed about the liberal lovey establishment is now you know lying in a puddle of shitty smelling water at their feet right so and all of a sudden the phone goes oh bloody hell i've heard from him for a while so i sort of picked it up carefully and said hello <laughs> i'm not very good with the phone hello and this little voice said oh hello i said i said it's so and so i said i know it's you I said, i've got your name on my phone he said can we talk I said, well, yes, if you want. It's been, what, three years or more? Yeah, if you want to. He said, I, I just want to ring up and tell you how angry I am with you. Right? <clears throat> so I was sat there thinking to myself, I'm just watching this happen on TV to one bloke. I said, I've got, now I've got another one on the phone. It's rather peculiar. Rather peculiar. So what do you... What, right, OK. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, thank you for calling. No, 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 I want to tell you why. <laughs> just like, go on then, why are you angry with me? And then it all comes out. Exactly what you'd expect. I thought you were a friend to the trans community. I thought you were this. I thought you were that. I thought you were that. And I thought you were this. And I, I thought that you were that. And he went on for a good three or four minutes. Until finally he said, and, and I've just discovered you're right. <laughs> <laughs> to which I responded, I don't know. I'm, I'm unsure what you mean. When you say I'm right, so could you just, could you explain a little bit about what you mean by I'm right? And then he came out with at least six or seven of the standard things that people that have suddenly just got their head around how dangerous this nonsense is for children and gay people came flowing and tripping over his tongue like he'd been saying it all his life. To which my response was, OK, so you now believe it's dangerous to children, do you? Yes. You now believe it's dangerous to gay men? Yes. Is it dangerous to women? Yeah. Okay, what's the danger? Well, that's obvious, isn't it? It's men. I said, right, so it's men when it comes to women. What's the danger to gay men? Well, surely it means we don't exist. I'm like, oh, right, okay, somebody's getting this. Somebody's beginning to get it. What's the danger to children? Well, this trans thing's a lie, isn't it? So which bit of it? He said, all of it. I said, how are you feeling? Really angry with you. You know, and what he was saying essentially was, I'm mad at you for making the truth seem worth knowing. What he's mad at is, is me for breaking his bubble. And so I said that to him. I said, I don't know why you're angry at me. The person that you should be angry at is you. Because you have the, you're an intelligent man. We've drunk together many times. We've sat on the, you know, in the village up here in Manchester and spoken many times. We've known each other for a good 10 years. And here you are saying that you're angry at me because I've made you see something you didn't want to see. Is that, have I got this absolutely right? Yes. Keep the response. Okay, well, you can be angry at me because I don't care if you're angry at me. 
I said, but I want to know uh, what you're going to do about it now. Um, uh, um, I don't know. Right, OK. So do you want to do anything? Uh, no. <laughs> right, OK. I said, so why have you found me? He said, I think this is the fir first part of me not doing something. I said, right, OK. So you're, you're stuck with you don't, you don't want to do anything. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I said, to make it easy for you, I'll put a very simple post on Facebook saying it's all nonsense with a few points about why it's nonsense. And then you like and share that post. What do you think the response was? Yes, you're correct. The response was, don't do that. This is someone from a group of friends that I've known for a long time. That we all used to drink together. We all used to sit outside, you know, on the balcony, in the pub, in the sun, or wherever it may be. We'd eat together, we'd drink together, we'd laugh together, we'd sing together, we'd do the whole damn thing together. And then for some reason, just dropped me like a red-hot brick once he found out what I was about. Now he's woken up. And the trouble is, he's in the middle of a group of people who don't know that he's woken up, all of whom were our friends before this all got nasty, right? And he's also known for being a fairly progress progressive person. But yet he said to me, I'm stuck in the middle of this with all these people that we know and I can't say anything. They don't know I think like this. I said, well, that's OK. What do you want to do about that? Nothing. Why? I don't want to lose everybody. Why? Well, I just I just don't want to lose them. I'm scared. I said, well, you know, that's that's when you have principles and you stand up for them. There's no point in having those principles unless you're prepared to stand up for them when, it matter, when they matter. Said, so why don't you just respond to that thing on Facebook? No, I can't do that. OK, well, I'll tell you what, you go away. Here's a book you should read. Anna Barnes, time to think. And you should then come back to me afterwards if you want to meet up and have a coffee and we'll have a chat. Yeah, but can we do it somewhere where people won't see us? Now, that's some standard bloke, gay guy, right? Woofter. You know, who's, who's mincing around the village and has been for 10 or more years. Um, and I've known for a very long time. And he's been cancelled. Right? He's not been He hasn't lost his gig. Nobody's not buying his books. He's just been cancelled to such an extent that he's stuck with a group of friends he can't tell the truth to. And the more he tries to remain in that position, the crazier it will get for him. That's, that's unfortunately how it works. And eventually I'm sure I'll hear from him again. But he, he doesn't want to be seen with me or anybody I'm attached to. In case people get wind that he might be gender critical, which of course he now is. It's the strangest thing. The strangest thing. So, interesting, I mentioned Andrew Dorn in the Trigonometry Boys. I'll put that in the links today. But I also want you to put, I'm drawing attention to a new uh, documentary from Spiked about Graham Linehan, the man of great stature, the comedian, writer of black books, etc. Count Arthur Strong, hey, and brilliant Father Ted uh, from Spike. So we, I'm going to try, I've got to remember to do it now. So we're going to have the Trigonometry episode with the guys rattling on about you know, gender and this bloke peaking in real time. We've got Graham Linehan, which I'll also put into the links into the Dubris for you. And finally, there's an article I want you to have a look at because it'll give you some pause for thought, which comes from a guy called Stephen Pinker in America. And Stephen Pinker in America is writing there about what's called the Southern Poverty Law Centre, which was a great bastion against the extremism of groups like the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK, in their time and also other very brutal right-wing ideas that they took on and won on. They've just produced a look a bit of sort of handbook thing and you have to see it to believe it. So now they're, they're, they're adding people to this list of people that are hardcore extremists. It's only a matter of time before I get on there, I imagine. <laughs> but Sex Matters is on there, I think. So go and have a look at that as well. So Stephen Pinker, that's it. The Trigonometry Boys? Yes? Trigonometry. The spiked online Graham Linehan documentary and the Stephen Pinker article on the Southern Poverty Law Centre. OK, that's it. You're done now for the day. Do your own work. Go on. <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye.